Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tierno, which we're playing as Ust Sisolosk, in which last time we took out the WRRF, the Commies to the North, the fake Tsar to the south, and then Samara even further to the south and southwest. Right now we should do another focus though. In which what can we do? The convention. To an outside observer, the great convention of the passion organization must be a decidedly odd spectacle. The effort to get to a big tent party comprising several social conservatives, radical Eurasianists, or traditional monarchists, and everything in between to agree on a shared doctrine is proving to be a challenge. So challenging, in fact, that an alternative proposal for uniting the parties quickly becoming the preferred option. Call the convergence and consists of a vote to be held at the end of the assembly to determine the leader of the organization and the new head of state. Awesome. And right now, we haven't quite unified Western Russia yet, so I'm going to scavenge for loot, because we can start beating people up. And if there's something I like to do in Old, old World Blues, no, in Old World Blues, but especially in TNO, I like to beat people up. How strong is Kazakhstan? I got a lot of manpower. And, oh. Hmm, if we fight them, we might not win. How strong are these guys? Well, they have no manpower, and eight, oh, they might have tanks. Oh, man, I just want to beat these guys up. Can we do stuff over here? Military access, and now we good. Maybe we should secure some more control, get more stability, because we'll probably need that later on. So Kazakhstan. We could try it against Kazakhstan. Why not? We're trying to course some more stuff. Oh, also, in the last video, the last video's comments, also said, someone said I should probably stop raising monarchist influence. And they're probably right. So, yeah. We're not going to do it anymore, because 104 is better than 80, 69. Nice. Or 36. So we're pretty much done with that for now. And you know what? We'll just do Kazakhstan. Let's have a good time with them, right? Irkutsk unifies the Russian Far East. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, Yagoda. Well, at least he did what his duty, I guess. It's pretty. Uh, it's 65, so. It's almost 66, too, so. Uh, I don't think we can peacefully reunify Russia with him, so. We have the convention done, though. The final words. The con con convergence room looms. Lines are being drawn ever more firmly as the primary leadership candidates make their last appeals to the voting membership. There are no more debates to be had, no more backroom deals to be had. The four men who each make a final speech and then the decision. The only other question to be decided is who will be the ones to speak last. It's the most desired position in the order of speeches by all four candidates, and whoever secures it will have gained both the prestige of a small victory and perceived benefit of having the last word before the vote. Who will it be? The will to power belongs to those with the strength to seize it. Cool. Now, obviously, some of these divisions are incredibly weak, especially this one. Of course, I did convert these guys over, so... Yeah, they're not looking too good right now. Current manpower is 14%. Not very bueno, especially as we're trying to... Ooh, initiate a raid? We'll see what happens. I have a little more confident now that this guy is looking really, really weak. So, pretty confident. They paid the tribute. That's what we like to see, everyone. We can scavenge for loot and then get some more equipment. Awesome. That's a case. Are there any other areas that we need a core around here? I kind of don't think so. No. Oh, look, a little bit of manpower. Happy 1966, everyone. It's going to be a great, great year for us. At least let's hope so. I want to take these guys out, though. I really want to. Hmm. Oh, I guess your influence drops down to 100. That's interesting. Now, the Convergence. Will we become... I suppose that no matter what we do, if, even if we do this, we still have this part of the tree unlocked, which I hope so. So that would be good. Push to the Urals. Yeah, I want to do this. I decrease coring time, stability, airings no more. Move the capital to Vyatka. Well, let's, I want to see what happens. Convergence. The final speeches have been held, and then it's time for the convergence to take place. Four men will enter the National Assembly as candidates, each hoping to emerge from the vote as president, ready to guide the passionary to achieve their vision. Only one will succeed, though. With everything now at stake, tensions are running high. The candidates all have committed to respect the Assembly, but that's but it's anyone's guess how long that respect goes should the tide turn against them. Oh boy. The last word. <clears throat> there was a certain melancholy at the night's National Assembly. Officials shuffled into their seats, staff made their last preparations, and even the mice in the wall sat still. It was the one it was the last one before a true leader of Comey, and later Russia at large, would be empowered, with most of the men in the room stubbornly decided on who they would support. Some still stood in the middle. Thus, while others dozed in waiting for another speech to ignore or affirm their beliefs, some sat at the edge of their seats as they waited for someone to take the stage. And take the stage they did. A man quickly approached the podium to give the last speech, but who? Kamaleov Shafarovich Sadov 
or Daddy to Sergey. I think Daddy Sergey should probably win, especially if he's on the thumbnail of these videos for this campaign. So we have Svedlovsk, and then Novosibirsk, probably. And these guys have to kill each other eventually. Who is that? Oi, Rotia? Oh. Ivan. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. Religious divide. Oh, let me see the Siberian. Wait, he. Christian socialism. Consumer goods, 67%. That's not good. Holy crap. Did you want to build anything? And convergence. And which next we shall do. Push to the Urals. Because even. Ooh, Tartar ultimatum. Break the Tartars. Wait, hold on. Tartars. Um. Is that Taos? No? Okay, well. Hmm. I would like to push to the Urals. Oh, might as well. The Urals are the natural Far Eastern border of this first phase of our expansion, with the exception of the unassailable Vorkuta. A selection of petty warlords dares to exist along the lines of the mountains, relying on the natural barriers and isolation to protect them from true contenders such as our state. No longer. We will sweep south along the Grand Mountain Range and secure the eastern border from those that wish to attack from the lands of the fell West Siberian People's Republic. Cool. By the fell. And the meeting begins. The final struggle over Komi's future took place where so many battles had happened beforehand. The National Assembly. First came Gumilev, surrounded by guards, and he and his representatives taking their seats in the center of the assembly. Next came Shafarevich, his men surrounding him as dutifully as Gumilev's, and they took their place to the left of the assembly. <clears throat> there was a short delay before Serov. His men, clad in Soviet uniform with the stars ripped off, stepped through the doors. They took their spot in between Gumilev and Shafarevich, and the venom began to spit between the factions, verbal tussles, insults, angry whispers. Finally, Tabriski and his men filed in, taking their seats on the right of the assembly floor. The stage was set for a political explosion of biblical proportions. The only thing to do now is to give the speeches, to cover, and wait for the pieces to fall. The fate of the nation rests on shaky ground. The vote. Oh, I can't wait. Who's gonna win? The vote. It was here. Hours of yelling, of politicians stomping the feet, of passionate speeches and angry rebuttals, a fistfight had, had even broken out once or twice after a long, arduous journey, the men and women of the National Assembly rose to cast their votes on who should lead Comey into the future. Gumilev didn't show it, but his heart pounded against his ribcage as the silence grew. A truck was waiting outside in an unlikely case he lost, and he did not expect to lose. If he won, the plans to dispose of Tabritsky and Serov were clear in his mind, to be executed almost immediately but before they could escape. Shafarevich was a different story, but he would get around to him soon enough. Shafarevich hid his face behind the papers to hide his growing fear. Plans swirled in through his head, mixing in his mashing, an escape plan here, an ex execution plan there. Whichever one he would need to implement, he was certainly ready. Serov's ice-cold face did not betray a hint of nervousness. His mind had been filled with plans. Plans to leave, plans to stay. He would win, or he would leave, and he suspected the rest of the room felt the same way. As much as they tried to hide their emotions, Tabritsky drummed his fingers against the table. Could he do it? Could he win? If not, what then? He hadn't thought that part of his of this all the way through, his half-formed plan ending at leaving the city in the car as quickly as possible. Whatever he did after this vote, he knew it would decide his fate. As the votes were counted, the tension increased, and it was about to burst, a man stepped up to the podium and began to read, The winner is... I wonder who's going to be the winner with this event name. Oh, no. Who's going to win? I hope it's Mr. Sergei, dude. Taboritsky's Triumph. A stunned silence enveloped the National Assembly as a final result was read. Gumilev rose from his seat, shut. Shafarevich's eyes widened in astonishment. Serov's face broke for a moment, bro showing his absolutely confounded expression. For a moment, there was absolute silence in the room, and then everything began to move. Men exploded from their seats, shouting unintelligibly un about a rigged vote. Some began shaking down those around them, searching for the traitors to the party, to their leader, to the nation. Others made a beeline for the door, their hand playing and lost, and the only thing they could do was leave. Still others rushed towards Tabritsky's joyous men, stopped only by a line of policemen and guards separating the groups from each other. The noise echoed off the walls, only escalating into a cacophony of chaos. In the middle of it all, Tabritsky's men, or Tab Tabritsky's smiles spread across his face. He had always known he was in the right. He knew he could win, no matter what the others thought. Once again, he was correct. Now, the rest of the right would see that, see what Sergei Tabaritsky really was. It can't be true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man, I love this. You change the flag? Not really, and that's okay. Ooh, don't mind if we get some new equipment, everyone. Oh, we did it, my friends. We did it. Oh, oh, he's so handsome. Oh, maybe not so handsome. But I like that uniform. I didn't realize he, get, he actually gets a uniform. We get less monthly population, but we get 10% more stability. If you'd like to read about that, go right ahead. So he's born to a Russian m Russian merchant and a Jewish seamstress. Nevertheless, a staunch Russian monarchist. And an earnest anti-Semite from, er from an early age. Okay. Cool. Well, I guess maybe that's not cool, but, you know. Uh, it's interesting to ha that he has an interesting backstory. Hmm, we'll put it like that. 
Building roads. Building civilian factories. Don't mind if we do. Decrease black market trading. Oh. Trading. Black arm trading and luxury trading. Oh, boy. Yeah, we may want to do that. Oh, that does not look good. I don't like less output. Light? Uh, 97%. Hmm. Well, let's at least do this one. A word to the... Mladros. Mladorosi. Cool. Push the girls. Awesome. We can still do this one. We can still strengthen the passion and get more war sports still. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Cool. If you want to read about this one, go right ahead. I mean, it already auto-did it, so. Another piece of the puzzle. Arians know more. Second... Purification. Another piece of the puzzle. Our appraisal of the Mladoro Sea was correct, it seems, and the integration of the Berezniki into our state is projected to go by without a hitch. The ideology of the Mladoro Sea continues to be a fascinating element, one that is quite appealing to many within our state, especially the followers of Taborutsky. The development of Berezniki can be greatly hastened by leaving its administration more or less untouched and allowing the current government to exist with only minimal oversight. And this will hopefully slightly decrease Koring Khan, which would be good. Currently we get 0.7 political power a day. Not ideal. But that's okay. That's totally okay. Right now, we actually have... Oh, we actually have manpower! Look at that! We actually have manpower! I just realized that. Awesome! If that's the case, I'm gonna have you guys train then. And we need to convert these guys over to this template, which is what? 17 combat width. Okay, I, it's, it's time I make them a little... Uh, hit a little harder. We'll put it like that. There you go. Hopefully we have enough artillery for that. Oh, and West Siberia has been unified. Ural military district, which we will have to kill. Oh god, don't do, tell me I have to fight through the Urals through this. Oh good lord, yeah, we will have to. That will not be good. So we basically have us, the Ural military district, Novosibirsk, and that far eastern Soviet Republic. It's gonna be very bloody. And actually, Germany's looking pretty good. I think it was a Borman that won. It's always usually Borman. Aryans know more. If you want to read about that, go right ahead. Another piece of the puzzle. Cool. The second purification. The Aryan Brotherhood claimed that they had purified their lands, removing the stain of the Untermesh, Untermensch, and instating a new order under their enlightened rule. This is, of course, mere delusion. The city of Perm and the lands around have been stripped bare of their character, and the peoples of the region have been abused and enslaved by the Aryans. We must aid the region, liberating the people from their chains, prosecuting the leaders of the damned cult, and installing a completely new local administration. The crimes which one must commit to be considered Aryan are a clear telltale that none of the Brotherhood's members are to be trusted. Thankfully now, they shall forever bear the mocks of shame. Welcome the Mladorosi. They are fascists, so they claim. For years they have stoked or staked out on the western end of, or eastern end, I should say, eastern end of Vyatka, managing their own little patch of dirt with their unorthodox beliefs. However, Vyatka is gone and the territory of the Berezniki is under our control. The question that has plagued multiple warlords over the years now falls to us. What do we do about the Mladorosi? On the one hand, their beliefs, as unorthodox as it may be, do mostly fall in line with at least some of the Komi right. They could make good political partners in the region. On the other hand, some of their beliefs directly clash with some of the closest held beliefs of our own. Some even whisper that they are Bolsheviks under a coat of white paint. Though such allegations are certainly exaggerations, they must be taken into account. In the end, this decision may not change the face of Russia forever, but it will certainly play a helping role for one faction or another, depending on what the fate of Mor Mladorosi is. Uh, increases influence, stability. We lose political... I don't want to lose political power. And we've already won the election, so... Doesn't matter. There you go. I mean, we could do this again, but we've already won the elections. I hope this. Hopefully, this will go away. Hopefully, no one's going to do like a counter coup. That would be very bad for us right now. All right, my apologies about that, everyone. But OBS decided to crash, and I'm glad I caught it before I recorded. Too much further. In which, right now, well, how about we go ahead and do a little ready raid against uh, the Germans, the Oberkommando Brauchstadt. So let's have a good time with these folks and maybe get some more loot. Or really just prove to them that we can beat them up. Hopefully they don't have a lot of tanks. Because if they don't have a lot of tanks, then we could probably do pretty well here. Hmm. Actually, I'm not going to remove this yet. If it gets worse, we might. Even though it does lower our stability. But we already have 100%, so we're doing pretty darn well. We get minus 1% for... Um, Consumer goods, consumer goods. I forgot about that. Sukarno wins Indonesian Civil War. Well, good job. And they refuse tribute. Soviet. <coughs> I like her chances so far. That's looking pretty good, I would say. But that's just me. Actually, 
we should probably pay attention to how strong uh, the Euro military district actually is. Let's see. The Bashkir Ultimatum? Oh, I have to use Gumalev, our Turkic brethren. Cast down Bashkiria. Well, since we're at war or doing the thing right now, Bashkiria, which one is that one? Um. Uh, which one is that one? Wait, which one? Bashkiria. Bash. Okay, well, let's control the factories then. Whereas the current personnel running the factories of Nizhny Novgorod are at least semi -com competent, they are hardly loyal to us and only us. A less charitable state could denounce them as a pack of mercenaries loyal only to profit. In light of this, some changes in their management must be pursued rather than following the logic of Bandit's market. The heavy industry that Ninsky Novgorod must be put under direct control and for the purpose of aiding our sacred task to reunify the motherland. I'm still loving how good we're doing down here. Love it. Love it. Wow, well, get one today. Nice. Not bad. Hopefully we win. Hopefully they don't throw anyone in over here. Oh, what was that? Paulusburg? Oh, so Paulus must have won in Stalingrad. Okay, that makes sense. In this timeline. Yeah. Brauschitzstadt. Moscow. Yarslau. Okay, are, we, are they just not going to show up? I mean, it's fine if they don't show up. I mean, I, I do want to have a little bit of blood spilled here against the Germans, but okay. Suharto Ku's Indonesian government. Strange times in a strange land. Indonesia. Must have got to be a wild place to be there. Or wild place to live, I should say. Okay, raid successful. Cool. Food for the hungry, too. Best oh, better agricultural methods. Without food, many men w may not work. And without work, government simply ceases to exist. The bureaucracy that sustained it evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more plenty and the formation of ever more complex states. After all, were not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? New agricultural innovations will reduce the amount of hard labor needed on the fields and shifted the workload to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizer allows crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Man will have food and it will be plenty. For this better we think, this is the first upgrade we actually got. Basic mechanization for mass mechanization, better division training time, monthly population, more recruitable population, less consumer goods factories, and more output. Yes, please. And industrial equipment. Okay. We tied at the same time. The economy is doing great. And new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world have proved a boon to worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwing in or screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and renewed focus on what industries are making have increased support for much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Excellent. Power tools with rudimentary manufacturing lines give more resource efficiency gain, construction speed, and output, especially for dockyards. Awesome. 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 Uh, that's what we like to see. 2020, not bad. Food for hu they're hungry. If you would like to read that, go right ahead. But even better. Cool. And we're always going to be making some sort of a uh, civilian factory line here, too. Yeah, might as well. Actually, no, do it there first. There you go. Actually, no, do do just that stuff first. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure where these guys are at. Let's cast it on on Bashkirda. So called Independent Republic of Bashkirda is nothing but a separatist fantasy, an illegitimate state carved out of the territory of what is rightfully Russian. Its Islamist nature is con contrary to the very nature of the Russian civilization, and the separatist nationalism held by its people is an affront to our sensibilities. Bashkirda will be rightfully taken into Russia once more through bullet and bomb, fire and sword. Actually, oh yeah, there you go. Actually, reunification of Russia. I should have done this earlier. My fault. I, I apologize about this. I should have done this way earlier. I didn't realize this at all, so. A new focus tree should become available upon the resolution of the Onega issue. For some reason, I thought we had to continue going down our focus tree. That's usually what happens. You get through the focus tree, you gotta wait to unify your little region of Russia, and then you can do it, so. There we go. West Russian Regency unifies West Russia. Life of the Tsar and this blessed regent. My apologies, I should have done that way earlier. But, I was more focused on this stuff. Unitary Russia. Ooh. The city of Bashkirda, or Kyria, is once more within a grasp and its armies have been routed, routed before superior firepower. All that is left to do now is to inter integrate the former Bashkiria as a new province within the new Russian state. The new administrative unit shall be named Ol Ufa Oblast. A replacement of the administration shall follow, with the Russian language curriculum instated and a census run to determine the exact population and demographic composition of the region. The mistakes of the past in dealing with the Bashkirs will not be repeated. My, my apologies, man. I should have done this way earlier. 66, grab some of the civilian construction 3. Hey, we can mess around with this stuff too. So we have some debt. Oh, we're gonna lower this for now. Lower that for now too. Increase constru construction spending though. Oh, world recruitment's gone. That sucks. You know what? We're gonna max maximize construction spending 
Maybe I should not have cut civilian spending. Yeah, maybe I should not have done that. My bad. But, you know what? I'm going to mess with this whole up now. Annual income is 9.7. Deficit. Yeah, a lot of construction. Lower that. But whatever. Oh, yeah, that, that was... I should not have done that. My bad. I started clicking on things. I'm like, I got happy. I got... I'm like, just click, 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 click. Bad, 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 Mr. Muckle Lover. Bad, 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 bad. But then again, I think we're going to be doing pretty okay. I don't think we're going to get attacked by too many different people, so... Eben Don. The fate of Western Russia was sealed with, not on any particular day, but through a slow, gradual process. Few noticed any differences at all. Sergei Tabarisky was known for his authoritarianism and harsh dictates, after all. It was no secret that there were a few lines which he would not cross in the pursuit of his dream, the true secret. Visible only in hindsight was that that the self-proclaimed regent whose lines never existed in the first place. As the shadows length, and those who were overtaken by darkness sensed the beginning of something terrible, dissidents. Once arrested and put through due process, began to simply disappear. The faces of Tabarisky's soldiers hardened, taking on a cruel aspect. Instructions of the citizenry became increasingly terse and cold. People whispered fearful wisdom to one another, spreading tales of arbitrary punishments delivered without mercy or hesitation. Change came gradually, but the day on which a protest was met with pos phosgene gas, and the deadly route of machine guns was the final turning of the key. The clock chimed a hollow note. Hailing the dawn of a new day, the sun rose but cast no light upon Russia, for it was a black as pitch, and wreathed it in the umbral halo of unbited nightmares. Darkening skies settled over the motherland, and the creation trembled. All abandoned hope. Oh, man. Change of popular Burgundian system. Ooh! An autocrat of havoc. Release even more multi-population. Abandon all hope. Oh, wow. Now this is beautiful. The Regency... Oh. oh, you changed back to your coat! Oh, okay. I guess I don't... I guess I won't change the thumbnail then. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Exert influence in the Southern Urals. How do we do this one? Do you just take up the Ural District, basically, probably, maybe? Oh, Regional Development, we gotta do that, too. Controls all Western Siberian states. Yeah. Holy Russian Empire. Oh, yeah. don't mind me. Nice. And we can still do this, but we maybe later. Alrighty, tidy. Now let's do absorb the tank fleet. The fleet of assembled tanks and support elements is considered by many of our generals to be the true prizes of NN. A vast reserve of armor power that can be deployed against our future foes. The bandits controlling the city before us at least had the foresight to hire competent personnel to arm them and keep the factories running. We will profit from this by extension and mobilize a motor pool of Nizhny Novgorod for the purposes of our state. The con conversion of Bashkiria. Efforts to secure Tatar Senate began to in, 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 er, have begun in earnest. The roads are filled with trucks driving from village to village, tearing down the old Tatar flags and symbols and replacing them with their flag. All seems to be well so far, but an issue has cropped up the issue of religion. The Tatar people are Muslims, and our soldiers are overwhelmingly not. This has led to much friction, both in the region itself and at home. The three distinct wings have broken apart on the issue. The first pushes for an immediate focus on converting the Tatars to Christianity, after all they claim. It is their duty as honest Christians to bring the non-believers back into the fold. This would be costly and take much time to complete, but it could be worth it in the end. The second wing pushes for simply crushing Islam altogether, burning the mosques, prosecuting imams, and destroying their religious presence in the area as a whole. This is a controversial idea, but would be easier than conversion, though the Tatars would certainly be unhappy. Finally, some have proposed simply leaving the re religion untouched, the simplest, easiest option. Of course, with much of the right being religious themselves, this is a controversial position to take. In any case, we must act and act swiftly. Light of God? Tear down the ap apostates? Oh, uh, yeah. Daddy Tabritsky can't ever be wrong. Invest in construction? Oh, yeah, that's not bad. National service programs, huh? Weekly manpower, consumer goods. We lose a little bit of stability, but that's kind of probably okay. Return home, some guys. That's not bad. Size increase, increases GDP. Get more war sports, not bad. I want to save up for higher foreign instructors. I was recommended that we should probably do stuff like that, so I will. Hey, Delvanga, what are you doing? Get points of one a day, absorb the tank fleet, Tartar ultimatum. We can't do that, so break the Tartars is what we gotta do on Tartar Stan. Even though, hmm. Hmm. 65. We can do that one eventually. Let's go and grab this one. Military construction, too, because we will need to do that eventually, too, so that's good. Cool. Break the Tartars. Tartarstan is nothing but another rifle province within Russia, and the Tartars are merely Russians that have refused to assimilate. Through a swift and decisive invasion of the renegade Tartar state, we will be able to put an end to this separatist nonsense and secure the city of Kazan as a crucial component of our new Russian state. Cool. Russian in all but name. The Tartars are conquered once more, and once more uh, their separatist urges are defeated. What the region of Tartarstan truly needs is not autonomy of recognition, but rather total integration. Kazan and the lands around it will be incorporated into our new state wholesale. There is to be no native autonomy, for why should there be? 
Their territories are merely Russians that have lost their way, and their culture is merely a relic of the collective delusion. And slightly decreased scoring times. Nice. Oh, look at that. The Eastern Offensive. Yeah, kind of okay for now. I just want to raid. Oh, wait. No, we can't raid anymore. Oh, man. I just want to raid. No matter. We shall do this one. Now, I don't know if we go to war with Ur Ornberg or not, but we'll go and do that. Wow, look at that manpower. 172,000. Wow. Not bad. And then goes to the war. The West Rush, oh, the Russian Liberation War, German construction of the West Russian War, has found their home in the city of Samara, and permeated the region like a cancer. While they may claim to possess ideals compatible with ours, and are indeed compatible with the Russian people at all, they are nothing but traitors and German lapdogs. Vlasov has committed the greatest possible violation of the motherland's honor by serving those who wish to see the Russian people themselves cast down and reduced to a state below that of animals. For this, the ROA deserves nothing but... Uh, swift and total destruction. Our armies are ready. Let the wrath descend upon Sumera and shatter the traitors once and for all. Cool. We go to kill them off and scour Sumera. Sumera is ours, and with it, we have secured miles and upon miles of fruitful land, dozens of factories and arsenals overflowing with the useful equipment. However, we have also inherited another less valuable thing: traitors. Sympathizers with the Russian Liberation Army and the Germans fill our newly occupied territory, and their par partisans continue to fight our forces in many areas. The solution to this problem is simple: a grand crackdown on the streets and no mercy for any poor fool who dares carry on the cause of a dead traitor. Oh, we lose stability, huh? Casting down Tartar nationalism. We are all Russians, like it or not. Amen. Let's see, next one will be done in quite a while, which is fine. Keep training for now. You guys are looking much better. How strong are these armies? Oh, they are authoritarian Democrats under Batov. Ooh, I think someone actually asked me to play as Batov again with Sl Sl Sverdlovsk. So, new Russian army. Oh, man, these guys look... They're probably not going to be easy to defeat. Overextended administration. Ooh, we do we have that? We might have that. They have plenty of manpower like us. We have more factories than them. They have way more divisions, though. Oh, my goodness. Actually, so since we have you guys... Oh, you actually have military police on you guys, huh? I did not realize that. We just a good, re good recon. We do have some army speed to do this, though. So. Uh, motorize. Scour Samara. Take that off and replace it with that. There you go. And train. <clears throat> Restoration Day. Today, the most momentous occasion in the history of our new state has arrived. The day of the reunification of the territories west of the Urals. Through our labor of blood and diplomatic efforts, all of West Russia has finally come under the control of our new state. Our vast lands extended from Arkhangelsk to Sumera, with a loyal and proud population millions strong for this achievement, the end of warlordism and Bolshevism in our lands. A national holiday shall be declared and parad parades held in all of our major cities. Truly, today is the first step in... A in the rise of a new proud Russia, it is the day of the new beginning of the and the end of the enemies of the motherland. More stability is always very nice. We're gonna need a lot of tanks for this. Actually, not that many more, huh? Okay, cool. We of course need some more casts, but we're doing uh, kind of okay. Kind of okay. Debt is but a number. Debt will be an issue that will be fixed later on. Oh, two oh, hundred, two hundred, huh? You have no planes. Oh, you have. Oh, your casts. There you go. Well, what if we told you? Hold on. No, we're still seeing that button right there. Hold. Come down there. Even though there's only 10 of you guys here. And then do that. There you go. Is that the only group we have? That is. Wow. Early fighters. I could train you, but man. Restoration day, my friends. There you go. And a revitalized Russian people. Change in popularity of Burgundian system. Oh, better poverty rate. Oh, my goodness, yes. Industrial equipment and expertise. I gotta get the revitalized Russian people. The most importantly of all of our reforms to the new Russian state, the people's morale and political will must be revived. For far too long, warlord conflict, bombings, and starvation has eroded the shared identity of the Russian people and eaten at the Russian patriotism within the hearts of the populace. A patriotic curriculum in schools must be established, focusing on our shared Russian identity. At long last, our people shall once more be revitalized, and their hearts shall beat with pride for their new state. Absolutely. Oh, actually, that helped out. Look at that. Four million. Not bad. It's only four million. Uh, our debt is... Ooh. 1.14 versus this. Ooh, our growth is only 5%, though. Our total GDP is just under 43 million, which will change over time. Propaganda. More weekly stability. Could be pretty good, actually. And you get more war support, too. That's, that's not bad. 
125 political power too. Yeah, we'd like to do that. After to be after 69, huh? Let's cut that. We're going to keep this... You know what? We're going to spend more money. We're going to spend a lot of money. We're going to build, 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 build right now. Just build both of these right now. Get as many civilian factories. And when is the next one going to be done? Basic literacy? Oh, yeah. That's going to be done pretty soon. Revitalize Russian people. Finalize the industrial policy. The industrial base of Russia has developed since the West Russian War, despite Bukhar and disastrous policies. However, it has not developed in a sane or consistent manner. Various warlord states' grandiose industrial visions have been carried out in clashing, contradictory ways, with redundant supply chains and technologies intended to make use of domestic resources. One of the most critical economic issues we face is binding all of our re regional economies together, uh, making use of the enhanced econ economics to scale, and working to ensure that functional and efficient logistics networks are operational. And a double bonus for industry. Nice. Awesome. Romania starts with Germany. No one cares right now. Poverty is increasing. Well, poverty is technically decreasing, which is awesome. Uh, rudimentary equipment and expertise is going along. And army professionalism is slowly going up as well, which is good. Burgundian system. I'm. This is my first campaign where I'm actually playing with someone who uses the Burgundian system. Wow, look at that. So, why can't we remove ultra-nationalists and fascists from our group? And national socialists? Because even though we have authoritarian socialism, and we still have a power vacuum there, what, what, can we not chase them away? I guess not. Hmm. We did that with the other group earlier, but okay, whatever. Worker training. Moderately increases GDP. State resource co corporations. Mm, one, two, three more infrastructure. Quite a bit more resources actually we need rubber of course we got plenty of fuel for now mm, western offensive yeah that's not bad actually that doesn't give us any more rubber though worker training societal development education install poverty relief i'm gonna go install poverty relief for now military industrial stuff you get more industrial societal equipment equipment industrial equipment societal development and a factory increases GDP. Eh. Military factory construction speed plus 25% is not bad. Uh, let's do more infrastructure. Expanding our, on, our logistical, on our logistical ambitions. Another issue that we must face is our lack of coherent centralized railroad systems. While warlords states did indeed build roads, they were often insular and limited, not connected to roads in the other fiefdoms. An understandable priority, but one that we must, must rectify. New bridges must be built over rivers that once formed borders between warring states. Collapsed tunnels must be re-excavated, and miles upon miles of roads and rail must be laid to build the new ties that bind us together as a true nation, rather than a mere collection of smaller states. I love infrastructure. Love it, love it, love it. Wow, we already have 100% stability. Look at that flag. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. The Western Russian Regency. As we're still making more divisions, which is awesome. So we have garrisons as well. Which we should probably get some military police for these guys just in case for the future. Uh, these guys are our dudes. Support anti-air might be worth it. Yeah, we're, we're done with these guys. Comprehensive strategic strategic analysis. Thank you. Let's get through the land doctrine as quickly as possible so we can focus on other stuff. All infantry motorized mechanized. Actually. Hmm. Scout helicopters. Attack helicopters. I'm kind of tempted to get helicopters. Can you imagine using helicopters as Tabaritsky? That sounds awesome. And lessons from the Unification Wars. The enemies we faced in the Reunification Wars to restore West Russia were varied in their tactics, ideologies, and equipment. From the deep battles of the Communists to the maneuver war for the ROA, we have faced every doctrine that could have been thrown against us and we've emerged victorious. However, this does not mean we should grow complicit. There's always more to learn in our, from our defeated foes, and integrating techniques and tactics from past enemies could help us refine our formal strategies even further. A general who does not adapt to uh, changing paradigms, after all, is doomed to fall to a general that does. Army XP and bonus for land doctrine, which is good. means we are currently here large scale exercise and we still have one two three four still so that's not bad not bad at all sick tf car awesome and of course after that one is our one last chance only one more task remains to ensure our complete control over Western Russia and our mandate to unite the rest of Eurasia. The reclamation of the territory of Olnega and a victory over the state of Finland on the field of battle. Finland presents a unique opportunity as our gateway to Europe. Securing a favorable peace deal with a Finnish state will both allow for possible territorial reclamation, but also serves as a show of strength to Germany and all other pact allied nations. By defeating Finland, we can secure our honor and recognition in the eyes of the international community and be respected for a triumphant or triumph 
martial prowess, which we will do. And I'm glad I read that so that we know that Onega has got to go. If we could get all this this part of uh, Finland too, that'd be great, but I kind of doubt that we can. Uh, Alright, I already read this, so one last chance. Cool. If that's the case, you're gonna, I'm going to hold these guys. So let's get a hold. Come over there. And then do that. There you go. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we actually did read that so we can do that. Get these guys over here now. Um, we're going to improve. Worker training, scientific methods. Moderately increases GDP. Moderately increases GDP. And better, better industrial equipment. Yeah. Most definitely. That warlord era is over. This smaller regional era is the time to do stuff. Oh, don't, oh crap. We have to put you guys down there. No, that's not good. There you go. We should be able to get, break over to the river, though. How strong is Finland? That's a good question to ask. Kargopol? Oh, look at that lag. Holy crap. Please stop lagging, game. Seriously, game. What is going on? It's not like Germany's falling into another civil war, right? Cool. Cool. Could get that. So we're done. We've got to get down here. Resource efficiency gain. Let's get a synthetic refinery, because we can. Finland. How is Finland doing? A uh, good amount. We have more factories than them. The six to ten divisions, a smart academic base. Great. One time and time again, societies crumble. All will agree it is usually a slow and painful process. However, there are many voices of dissent as to the exact cause. One prominent theory is that the foundation of any complex society is education. Moting adolescents to fit a role in any society is a key to maintaining its longevity. When a society experiences conflict, be it economic recession, civil war, social conflict, money and attention is often drawn away from schooling, creating a vicious cycle that slows down technological progress and discovery and kills curiosity towards the future. More caps, fact, research speed, and factory output, which is not bad. And decrease, hey, and decrease in poverty. Thanks to a greater poverty relief efforts, as well as expansion of our civil economy, our civilian economy, the poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As the government congratulates itself for its efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed. Are filed. Seeing that people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunities shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. So we lose more monthly population. We get more recruitable population factors, stability, wars, for construction speed, research speed, Factory and dockyard output, and more money. What more could you want? Really. And our deficit's only six, 6 billion now. Nice. Maybe we should stop cutting the military budget then. Especially if we're about to go to war with these guys. That probably would be a good thing to do. Oh my goodness, we need so many more guns. I didn't realize that. So many more guns. Yeah. I can't imagine having a deficit right now, so I'm not going to take this stuff off the planes because we're barely making any planes as it is. These guys will do okay by themselves, but oh my goodness. Propaganda campaigns, programs. That's oh, a little bit more debt, but you know what? That's, we don't really need to do that. One last chance. Oh, do we have another focus? We could, oh, I mean, get, technically we could go up top. We don't have to do these. I don't really want to. However, I will do a strength than the passionary because it won't matter. And. We get more war support. That's pretty much why we're going to do this one. So, now that the passionary is in power, the outside elements have outlived their usefulness and only served to hold us back from tr our true vision. Well, let's cut the dead flesh away so that the living may core may grow stronger. Do we actually just win here? You guys are ready to go, so... There we go. Not a lot of damage, but that's alright. Force the attack. Oh, they're going to start... Destroying enemies now. Yep. Slowly moving in. Crushing them. We lost 1,000. They've lost 4,000. Together, they have more divisions than we do, but that's alright. Nice. Take Onega, if you can. Come on, come on, come on. Your goal is to get to Helsinki. <laughs> oh, man. Can you imagine? Alright. Well, they're gone. Can we actually break into Finland? I've done that once. Go, go, go. Oh, national focus. Oh, hello. This is different. Cool. The Grand Regency. Wealth of Russia. Imperial Army. 
Well, let's do the Grand Regency first. We, the rightful Regency of Holy Russia, have finally risen. Our enemies crowd around us, but we tread the blessed path. Imperial heartlands have been reclaimed in the name of the God Tsar Nation. The Empire yet rises as Lazarus from its tomb. Yet there remains so much more to do. The foundations of our home are riven by rot, promulgations by the unholy degeneracy, Bolshevism, Jewry, and cosmopolitanism. The cleansing fire of our divinely mandated rule must burn away these impurities and make way for his imperial majesty before all hope is lost. I did that just because I want the political power, so. More military factory construction speed, yes please. The mules are focusing on, well, it's either tanks or helicopters. Maybe we'll do, hmm. So now we attack even harder? You know what, spend more, spend more, spend, spend, spend. Actually, did that give us some more attack? Hopefully it did. Ooh, that, that just looks okay. It's, it's not great. Let's go and do some agricultural mechanization. Why not? Civilian budget boost, military budget boost. We do get 10% more attack and 10% more defense. So hopefully that'll be enough for us to beat up the Finns here. It's going to cost us money, but that's okay. Oh, come on. Oh, we can get Comey. That's okay. Force the attack. Force it. Awesome. The Grand Regency and the wealth of Russia. United Russia would be the largest and wealthiest nation in all of creation. Great swaths of verdant agricultural land stretch from the Ukraine to the depths of Eurasia. Beneath Earth, there is very, very, a veritable amount of mineral resources. Iron, coal, gold, and thousands of more guests of God besides. Standing above it all, ready to exploit and be exploited in turn, are countless millions of the faithful meat for the grinder. Sadly, the majority of Russia is out of reach for now. The Regency must make do with what the Lord has provided us. The entirety of our land's wealth must be used put to use immediately and with maximum possible efficiency to begin the reclamation of the lands beyond the Urals. The Divine Right. And so far we're doing really, really well. Actually, we're doing a lot better than I thought we would, actually. Yes. Make sure that the Finns understand that they are not going to be welcome here. How's this looking, actually, right now? We don't have enough command power for that because they keep doing force attack. Actually, We've lost, ten, we've lost quite a few. We've actually lost a lot of guys. But we got to get the Finns capi to capitulate, so. And I, can the Finns keep this up? They kind of can for now. So, I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Tsarevich Alexei Nikolaevich Romanov and his heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. <clears throat> I swell that I will truly and faithfully execute the office of the regent, and that I will govern according to law and will in all things to the utmost of my power and ability, consult and maintain the safety, honor, and dignity of the Tsarevich, Alexei Nikolaevich Romanov, and the wealth of his people, so help me God. I swear that I will inviolably maintain and preserve in Russia the one holy Catholic and apostolic church as established by law, and that government, worship, discipline, rights, and privileges of the Russian Orthodox Church will be preserved, so help me God. Rise, blessed regent, said the archbishop, placing the regent's diadem upon his neatly groomed hair. <clears throat> Tarbrowski did so, standing tall and proud before the golden throne crafted in secret for this very day. Only the archbishop stood between him and absolute power, and that now that man stepped aside. Tarbrowski stepped forwards and took up the crown jewels, a scepter for his right hand, and orb in his left, both fashioned of gold and his own of his own design. He would never assume the imperial crown, but all present would know his absolute power from appearances alone. He turned and sat himself upon the throne of regency, and all before him knelt in sublime submission. God save the regent. Yes. A thousand times yes. Quite a bit of lag. 67, huh? Happy 67. We actually got through another entire year. How are we already 40 plus minutes into this video? That is crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Help kill them off here, and then help kill them off here. The Regent's vision. The Regent lays there in his silken bed. The darkened ceiling swarmed with telltale signs of the sky. Lines of indescribable color that lanced through his view of the snuffed out chandelier. They danced up, up there for him. But they knew that if he stood up, he could not reach them. They were too far away, too distant. Through watching them, he had tracked the progress of his, of his ascension. The trek of the Tsarvich, the rightful heir from Yekaterinburg. They stood fast, however. Where had he gone? They would not have disappeared if he had died. For the sky tracks the immortal soul, not the fallible body, to the regent. That was the mystery of it all. And the lines, he could watch them. He knew who was planning against him, who was secretly calling him a madman. And on those threads, he saw himself binding them, giving the attention of the Okhrana, until they told him all what they had done what they could do, who they were, no matter how carefully the, they lie, or how much the liar begging that he was innocent. He saw the patterns of the weave of heaven. He blinked, and for a moment he saw a flash of inspiration, something new, something moving in the sky, in a new line. He twisted around in his mind and let the gaps be filled with something new, interlocking around the strings, pulling them in, coalescing from dust like his Russia had. A miracle, a loom with which to weave the future, the strings needed an engine to drive them. The region opened his eyes, gazing around the room. The journal sat on his nightstand, testing his tension. He knew which way the clocks would turn, but... Did his treasury? Did the people? The court? He picked it up. Along with his pen, he would tell them to adjust their habits at once. The letter would be sent in the morning. They had to know. 
My eyes can see forever, but but what of the past? Does time shift behind us, out of view? Connections upon connections, how far do they go? But of the past. Bells ring from a radiant future, take heart. Let's do connections upon connections. How far do they go? I just hope we can win here, too. So. I want you to help support the attack. It's not going to be that strong, but that's okay. How far do we have to push into Finland for this? If we can encircle a few divisions, that'd be really good, but I don't know if we really can. Alright. Uh, Finland offers ceasefire, though our soldiers have not managed to share the finish lines as we hoped. We are still making steady advances into their territory, perhaps fearing that they will not be able to hold us off for much longer, simply not wanting to expend the blood and treasure to our fellows. The Finns have offered us a truce. They propose to cede Onega to us in exchange for an end of the fighting. Shall we accept the treaties we have offered to us, or reject and fight for greater gains? Well, we're not doing great right now. No. A thousand times no. Not until they were dealt with. And in full. The soldiers shall wish they had never taken Onega or helped defend Onega. These guys are encircled and shall be mercilessly crushed. Keep them in place. Move them out. Kill them off. My Good. apologies once again for that. I don't know what's going on, but apparently OBS crashed once again. This is getting a little bit ridiculous, but I'm, at least it gave me time to see that uh, these guys want freedom, and uh, they're not going to really get that here. And that's going to be okay. Come on, guys. Move in, move in, move in. we got to capitulate the Finns. Oh, the wealth of Russia. Don't mind if we do. A virtuous education. Academic base. Citizens will be encouraged to donate their savings to the state. Tear down failure. And industrial equipment will begin to worsen. It, we will be stronger for it. I don't want to do that until we can do all this by itself. Holy crap. Exploitative taxation. Income rate goes way up. The clock speeds up. Oh. Our miscellaneous income will increase by $150 million. Return to tradition. Return to tradition. Rapidly improve industrial equipment. Build on the ruins? Cathedrals of industry. No land untouched. Holy crud. Sins of the past. Army stuff. Ooh, no law but the regents. Army professionals will go down. Military policing with no supervision. What the heck? Through the fog? Expanding the arsenal? Clouds on the horizon? Venerate soldiers. Four year draft. Ooh, rapidly improve army professionalism. Let's try to go with that one. The Imperial Army. Now that Western Russia is fully under our authority, and the major internal rivals disposed of, we can finally uh, end, our, end our alliance on paramilitaries and the barely loyal military remnants of the wretched Komi Republic, or the Republic of Komi. Such rabble and undeserving the region's command, and their place, the Imperial Army will be finally returned after nearly 50 years of its absence, it will not be quite the same institution. The weaknesses that plagued it and contributed to Mengdi's defeats must be excised. There will be many trials and heads for our reborn empire, and the Imperial Army will be the spine that keeps it standing upright, none shall find them wanting. Cool. The Crown's finances. A poor showing Tabritsky thought as he closed a comprehensive report on the Regency's, fi Regency's finances. Poor indeed. Western Russia was one of the most resource rich areas in Europe. But was all this esteemed treasure could scrounge up? A paltry few billion in taxation? Had the people been utterly deprived by the Bolsheviks or the benefit of the Jews and were they themselves hiding something? Both these supposed to the former could easily have had led to the latter. The Regent rose and meandered over to the window of his study. A glass of Breton wine in hand from there he could see the smoke rising from chimneys on the skyline and beneath it. He knew that there were thousands of strong Russians working day and night to forge the arms of victory, but it seems that those same workers were holding out on him. The Soviet Union had been a worker's state, but had it not, surely their loyalty was questionable at best. Tabaritsky returned to his desk and set the glass aside before producing a sheet of paper to begin drafting a memorandum on the Imperial Treasury. What they had now wasn't enough. All within the realm was rightfully the Tsarevich's Alexei's property. Therefore, in his absence, it was the regents. The sovereign would have what he required no matter how jealously it might be guarded. All belongs to Mother Russia. Oh, that sounds great. Ah, oh, good. Four divisions. Destroy these two. Destroy them utterly. And we're actually doing really well. Holy cow. Nice. Overrun them. Oh, when do we get the event where we just peace out with them? Uh, let them go in there first. Cool. Now, let's go and reform the front line here. Just because I don't want to be guarding or defending against rivers. So. Oh, look at that. We got plenty of this. Let's see. Oh, integrate Onega. Yes. Immediately do that. Ooh. 
What was the clockwork? The state run onwards, powered by the approval of heaven. The scribes and inventors, the bureaucrats and soldiers, they are the component of the state and force that drive it forward, but to the region it would be wrong to call it organic. The state is not the state is not a living being. The state is a machine and an engine of infinite complexity guided by God's will, directed by the monarchs of mind the conduit to heaven. The region shall see all in the state, each cog, each axle, each piston in the grand divine clockwork that drives purity for the Russian spirit endlessly forward. There is never enough to guide. The clock has struck the first hour, slowly slipping forwards. The darkness of the red might Midnight fades away. Our test lies in the distance. Midnight must never be allowed to come. Consider our destiny. Knowledge is power. Divine knowledge is divine power. Appeal to the church. They safeguard his word now and they shall safeguard the region. Should I do these? Consider destiny. Um, well, let me know if I should do this or not. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure, so. I'm just going to come down here and do... Give me some more manpower, maybe. More stability would be nice at this point. Worker training, expertise is not bad. Research facilities. Let's go with education. There we go. Spending a lot of money on the civilian stuff, but that's okay. They're attacking us, we're attacking them. You know, it's a good all round. Come on, guys. You would probably do better if you helped out. Come on. Hopefully this guy's getting more experience. He's level 5. He's almost an organizer, too, which is good. Hey, we actually won. Good. Go in and just get reorganized, guys. Get to where you... What the hell are you doing? There you go. Something like that would be fine. Cool. Now get everyone over there. And then we're going to do another push. Cool. Hey, large-scale exercise is not bad. Uh, scientific research. Which we shall do more breakthrough organization for strategic cycles. Three. Hopefully two ish. Oh crap, we gotta break over the river again. One. And oh my gosh, you guys take forever to go. Let's go ahead. Screw it. Let's go. You guys can win up here, that's pretty nice. We have yep, we do have air superiority. The Imperial Army. Afnasi regarded his new uniform with a skeptical eye. All blacky ass sergeant point. Playing Nikolov, running his fingers over the stuff collar. Sir, we'll, co we'll cook down south during the summer. Don't complain, sent Mr. P or Polnikov. He was struggling to button up his coat after years of inaction on the border post left him with a beer gut. Besides, it's just a dress uniform, and if we're ever wearing it in summer, it'll only be for parade or whatever. The newly minted corporal wasn't sure about this. Two years in the Uranus militia, and this is where it led? To a strange hybrid of an SS and Sartre's uniform that barely fit him? Four more years of mandatory service and the prospect of fighting for a leader that he didn't even support? He joined it with Gumilayov. Precisely because he was a Republican and a believer in something new, but there he was, in the service of a Nazi and a monarchist. I hate this already, sir, he confessed as he tried once more to pull his undersized boots on. Why don't we just follow Gumilayov's lead and run? Ugh, oh, I remember when we used to fight Tabriski's boys, and you're really okay with just forgetting those days? I'm a patriot and believer, responded Polnikov curtly. If the man in charge is Russian and a man of God, then I'll fight for him. I respect Gumilayov, but he's never going to give Russia what it needed. At the back of the room, behind a row of lockers, Private Medvedev... Finished jotting down the corporal's words and made for the nearest telephone. That extra stripe didn't belong on the uniform of a traitor. Only men of God may fight for him. Oh, boy. Venerate the soldiers. Yeah, we're going to do this. Even though it hurts, our, hurts us quite a bit, we still get more army professionalism. The clock slows down. Okay. Russians, true Russians, not Bolsheviks or heretics, are the mightiest race the world has ever known. As a third Rome, the Russian Empire infused the essence of that glorious civilization into the very bones of its children. In her veins flow the bloods of Herak Heracles... Justinian and Constantine the Great. No matter how deprived or misfortunate we may be, we will always remain God's chosen warriors and the purest race of all creation. The region decrees that all good people of Russia be made aware of this fact. War is in our blood. With every able-bodied Russian man dwells the martial might of Archangel Michael. That will be decisively proven even if every man capable of firing a gun is to be conscripted and scourged until he finds his fighting spirit. In an ideal world, it would, not, it would never come to that, but merely propaganda may not be enough. Come on, guys. You got this. Oh, you guys are over here still. Cool. How far do we have to go? Do we have to do we have to capitulate all of Finland? We might have to. Which would not be ideal, but eh. What happens happens. I'm gonna request that you guys come right here and you help out. Looks like these guys are starting to get a little bit more injured, we'll say. Oh, even more divisions, not bad. 71 factories, never enough, of course. And I'll probably actually end the episode soon just because it's going on a little long, but that's alright. Um, might as well help out here, right? Cool. Military construction. Cool. 70, 70, 70. We're doing that one too. Engineering. We can't do that one yet, which is fine. Radar would be cool, but 
artillery. Let's actually do, get some better artillery, finally. Uh, come on, guys. They're looking a little weak. Looking a little weak. Can you beat them up? You might be able to. Can you beat these guys up? They're looking definitely weak here. That's good, yes. Uh, are you learning anything? 42% of an infantry leader. Looks like overall, the fins have finally kind of been broken to a degree. Resource extraction techniques. Go and beat them up. And excavation one, because we can. How many, how many resources do we have? Oh, we're, ooh. 70%. 70%. There you go. Venerate the soldiers. Loyalty in mind. Oh, strength of the body. Uh, monthly army professionals have changed. Plus one, purity and soul. Clock speeds up. Oh, boy. Loyalty in the mind. The Jews adapted, concealing its form from honest eyes by veiling himself, itself amongst their race. Its spawn takes on more Russian physical attributes with each generation, as any one of our soldiers could be a hidden Jew, spreading sentiments of disloyalty and pacifism among his intellectually vulnerable comrades. Thanks to God's protection, however, the new Imperial Army will be immune to this. Infiltrators will surface from time to time, but they cannot hide for long. A focus on instilling the loyalty, piety, and ferocity of the battle into the men will both improve our army's quality and fumigate the ranks. In time, the naturally deviant tendencies of the Jew will cause it to be inverted reveal itself, at which point it can be rooted out and put to the torch. This, uh, the, thus the, will the eternal faith and glory of the Imperial Army be maintained. Um, yeah, yeah, sure, well, I guess. Pride in our soldiers? Uh, the uh, parade assembled to the march down the streets of the capital was nothing like it had it been since the days of the Soviet Union. Every single subject reading there or residing there had been summoned from their homes on the pain of death to witness it, and with good reason. When the skeptics and dissenters saw that the region had finally loathed had assembled, their blood ran cold. Tens of thousands of black uniformed men marched in perfect formation down the main avenue towards the region's palace. Their goose-stepping boots beat out a heavy tattoo on the cobblestone like the war drums of heaven. Individual men disappeared under the vast carpet of black, shiny helmets, their identities sub subsumed into a single terrifying hole. Many onlookers found themselves cheering despite their trepidation, swept up by the sublime display of power before them. In the soldiers' way came the vehicles, trucks, half-tracks, tra half IFVs, and tanks, the finest that the Imperial Army could feel. The missile launchers and self-propelled guns of the region's favorites were given a special place of honor. There was a roar overhead, and the people looked up to see a flight of brand new jet fighter aircraft soaring past, trailing vibrant purple smoke. And upon the steps of the region's palace, gilded uniforms uh, glimmering in the sunlight, Sergei Tabriski held his legions and smiled, trembled, Zion, and despair loose stability for a lot more manpower. Wow. Offers conditional surrender. We've made them serious, made serious gains in our wars against the Finns, driving them and the Russian puppets out of our Russian proper. Uh, with our invasion of Finland well underway, perhaps it's time that f to send the Finns an offer of conditional surrender. Our terms will be simple. They hand over Murmansk, which is filled with Russian speakers in our rival territory. And we keep all of Olnaga in an illegitimate warlord state, which never should have existed in the first place. And we both agreed to create Karelian autonomy, a joint protectorate of both Finland and Russia that will serve as a buffer state between us and them. I will leave that decision up for you guys, because this video has gone long enough. And we shall conclude it here. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow, when we might continue beating up Finland and making this place go a little bit more crazy. Thanks for watching, though. Have a great rest of your day.